Time to pick up this anchor and leave. Bittersweet, but I can't wait to see what the Intercoastal has to offer us. Cause all that I want is for you to be happy and Give me a chance to show that you can be Well open your eyes and you'll see the way I see Cause all that I want is for you to be happy with me Charles and I are anchored off the coast of South Carolina in the remote and idyllic Steamboat Creek Unfortunately, we have to get back to Charleston today, and we decided to take the ICW route home with a quick stop for lunch at Wapo Creek. The whole trip is 30 nautical miles, and it'll take about five hours underway. Tonight I leave familiar for the great unknown. Got a couple broken arrows and my hair is grown since you saw me last talking on an old flip phone. Share the skin of who I used to be. Got some natural on the 45. I'm buzzing like And we're off. First thing is to get out of Steamboat Creek. We're doing about four and a half knots right now because we're fighting an incoming tide as we get out of this creek. But once we get actually into the North Edista River, we will be going with the tide. Um, so we should pick up a good amount of boat speed. Tonight I leave the only home I've ever known. Got a couple hundred dollars that I'm gonna blow on a guitar, a Fender or an Epiphone. Charleston for a month now and I can't say that cold is something that I have felt even once.
Is your heart like beating? Mine was too. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know that that is something that we'll do a hundred times, but there's certainly nothing like driving your house um, <laughs> into a situation where you can crash it. <laughs> and the sweet relief that you didn't. <laughs> The really important reason that we wanted to take the ICW today is because we wanted to make sure Jess was comfortable helming. Um, um, sometimes there's some narrow channels that we're going through right now, and we just want to make sure that uh, that we're both comfortable with that. And today is a perfect day to do that. Right now, uh, she's at the helm. I'm just making some more coffee, and uh, there's some docks maybe 100 feet on our port side, and the channel markers maybe 50 feet on our starboard side, and she's doing great. Supposedly the current here is gnarly sometimes, and that's why we left when we did. Uh, we're just past black tide, so we just missed the ideal time, um, but it's maybe 15 minutes past slack, so we should be okay. We're gonna run through it. Um, we'll also have the current going with us instead of against us, but apparently it can get up to about seven knots when it's actually ripping through. So we'll get through there, and then uh, we're either gonna stop for lunch uh, drop the anchor right before the only drawbridge we have to go through and grab some lunch or uh, if that anchor just full, we'll just uh, wait until the bridge goes up and then uh, head on over the bridge. And just like the bridge, we're getting a little nervous. It's pretty narrow. And, you know, the charts say that the current should be good, but it still looks like it's moving pretty good in there. So, worst case scenario, uh, Navionics live dropped down to four and a half knots. We were going, now that we're out of it, we're going six and a half. So. There was even some ripples of uh, white water as we came in, so that was, that was pretty gnarly. But uh, we're out of it and we're going to go see if we can't get into the anchorage and grab some lunch. We made it through the cut and we we're going to anchor for a little bit, make some lunch. And this morning when I was anchoring, I dropped the bridle into the water. So I'm going to try and redeem myself by fixing it while we're here for lunch. How many feet are we in? Same as last time. 75? Yeah. Going down? Yeah. Okay, I'm going. That is 75 feet of anchor chain down. Now I'm going to have to devise a way to get the bridle on, which means getting in the water. This calls for the most scientific of tools. Don't kill my vibe.
Well, on video I can't see. Oh, there you are. Aha! Let's see if that's on right. Ah! Get it on? Come on. That's one way to put a bridle on. That is one way. Hold on, here. So, bridle is back on. Now, should I go through or around? Ridiculous, all at the same time. Now, now I can go finish setting my anchor. Woo! Clearly dropping the bridle in the water this morning was not a professional sailor move, but I'm not a professional sailor, it's just in. Um, so I <laughs> uh, wanted to fix it in a way I knew how. Could have blown up the paddle board, could have got the dinghy down, but honestly I was kind of in the path of least resistance between me and my food. So took a couple of seconds to blow up that inner tube and worked like a charm. Do I feel somewhat ridiculous? Absolutely. But do I know everything about what I'm doing? Hell no. <laughs> um, so it worked and if anybody was watching, including y'all, at least you got a good show out of it. <laughs> Awesome lunch spot. The current swung around, and where we anchored originally was too close to a marsh for the current to swing around to be comfortable. So we've been here for about two or three hours, and we're just going to pick up and keep going now. I'm only about a mile away from Safe Harbor Marina, which is where we've been staying, and H Dock. So it's a little bitter, just bitter to be going back. It was so nice to be out and exploring a little bit. Wapo Creek Bridge. This is eastbound sailing catamaran. Oh, hey, I'm uh, requesting a lift at your earliest convenience. Thank you. It's safe to say that we enjoyed our taste of the ICW, and that might be a good thing. We still need to get above Cape Hatteras by October 1st, and there's so many storms in the Atlantic right now there hasn't been a great window for us to make the run up north. Maybe these bridges are opening a whole new opportunity and our journey north will be a bit different than we expected. Tune in next week to see what we decide. <laughs>